This is Joey McVeigh, moments after taking the life of his own mother. What happened, Joey? Well, I shot my mom. Okay. What could push a 10-year-old boy to murder his own family? What kind of gun did you have? 22. A 22? Rifle, handgun, or what? Nothing. Notice how the adults around Joey aren't panicking? Why does there seem to be a sense of relief in the room? These were the thoughts of the officers on scene. And soon, the investigation that followed would uncover the truth behind this unfathomable case. On January 2nd, 2011, Joey McVeigh went to a neighbor's house, called 911, and told the dispatcher that he had shot his mother in their home in rural Holmes County, Ohio. When police responded to the 911 call, they found the lifeless body of Deborah McVeigh. She lay face down on her living room floor with a single gunshot wound to the head. So where did you get the gun from? Mm -hmm. Your room? Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of gun did you have? 22. A 22? Rifle, handgun, or what? Okay. Joey, now unarmed and not posing any immediate threat, informed the officers that he had placed the gun on his bed. The evidence was clear, but the motive was incomprehensible. A 22 caliber firearm, a troubled child, and a mother taken too soon. What happened here? Joey's 15-year-old sister, Shauna, claimed to have witnessed her brother shoot their mother. When we got home, he was supposed to bring water for the fire, and he, had, he didn't know mom could ask him over and over. So he brought like one loader, and mom asked him to bring more in. Okay. But then he started arguing. When he shot her, she just like, dropped her around, and she was like sort of sitting like on the couch. She was like leaning up against the arm, and then she just fell. And then he pointed it at me. I told him not to go out and check on mom, and I went to put the gun down first, and he put it on the couch. According to her testimony, the day began with what seemed like a trivial disagreement. Joey didn't want to tag along with his mother and Shauna to the laundromat, which sparked an argument between the young boy and his mother. This argument continued later at home, centered again around chores. As tensions escalated, Joey left the house, slamming the door behind him. When he returned later, still angry, he confronted his mother about who she was talking to on the phone. According to Shauna, their mother refused to speak to Joey as he screamed at her. His mother's refusal to answer him only fueled his rage. Joey retreated to his bedroom, only to re-emerge about 10 minutes later, a 22 caliber rifle in hand. Shauna was forced to watch her brother confront their mother. She begged him not to shoot, but in a moment of unspeakable horror, Joey killed Deborah McVeigh. I heard a shot, and then mom, she just looked at me and fell to the ground. Then, in a moment that would haunt her, Joey pointed the gun at his sister. He assured her he wouldn't shoot, but his next actions were cold. He allegedly looked down at their mother, smirked, and shrugged his shoulders before leaving the house. He was yelling and screaming and all like confused and stuff what happened did you feel that he was going to shoot you if yes because after he shot mom i was scared when he looked at me he looked like he was like evil like the look in his eyes when he looked at me i was like scared according to grandma mcveigh she was the one who had been on the phone with joey's mother that night unbeknownst to her this call would become a crucial piece in the unfolding drama I'm Grandma McVeigh, and okay. Debbie was on the phone talking to me just prior to this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, she was sending the DR and saying all this to him. Mm -hmm. And then I heard so much screaming going on. She heard the unmistakable sounds of an argument, voices raised in conflict. Grandma McVeigh then heard the commotion turn into something far more sinister. In these moments, she was connected to the scene by voice alone, unaware 
that she was hearing the last moments of her daughter-in-law's life. In the aftermath of the tragedy, police made a startling discovery. Inside Joey's bedroom, they found not one, but six firearms, including the rifle used in the fatal shooting. The house was scattered with numerous other guns, easily accessible to all the children. Our country family with guns and stuff around the house, it's, it's just part of our family, and it, it come back on us. The McVeigh family, who lived a country lifestyle and enjoyed hunting, saw these guns as a regular part of their life. Relatives told the media that Joey would often practice shooting with BB guns, and he seemed to be responsible with firearms. They believed it was just how families like theirs lived, but this explanation didn't sit right with the authorities. Authorities worried that having so many guns openly displayed in the house, especially where kids could get them, was really dangerous. The situation was a recipe for disaster, especially in an unhappy house. After Joey was arrested, he had to answer a lot of tough questions from the police. What brought you to the point where you felt you should go in the bedroom and get the gun? Oh, no. Did she scream or? No, she's no. Have you ever been that mad before? Yeah, yeah, a lot. In a small room, Joey sat facing police officers who were trying really hard to understand how a 10-year-old could do something so serious. But he didn't seem to understand a lot about the situation he was in. What's the, um, whatever I can even think what it's called, uh, um, you know, like, what is it called? Where you're not, they're not taking No. The turning. Or whatever, uh, guy, like, helps you and stuff. Like yeah, that. that's our turning. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know what to do. They can help you regardless whether you talk to me or not. We don't expect you to know, Joey. How old are you? Ten. You're ten years old. You know, I'm not going to treat you like an adult, like you know everything. That's basically why we're taking longer to see if you want to sign this or not. He seemed to think that, at some point, he would get to go home with his grandma McVeigh. Are you all right, buddy? Yeah. I mean, I know, I know you're not okay, you know what I'm saying? But it, it, as much as to be expected, I guess. I just want to get a better feel on what happened and, you know, maybe why it happened. Oh, well, I told all the other people to ask me. Okay. So, I didn't know anyone else even asked you any questions. One of the cops or whatever asked me, but is there any way I could, like, how long do you think it would take until I could, like, be with her? Once Joey was lawyered up, Detectives working on the case began to find new information. These details started to paint Joey in a different light than the account from his sister. To others, Joey's background only supported their idea of him being a cold-blooded killer. Before the incident, Joey McVeigh had some troubles, especially at school. In 2006, Joey had a rough day on the school bus. He wasn't behaving and, allegedly, the driver pulled over, grabbed him by the jacket, and sat him down. His mom was so upset about how the driver handled it that she called the police. But nothing much came of it, and no one got in trouble. Then, in 2007, when Joey was just six, he got violent at school. He had gotten into trouble in class, and his principal took him for a timeout. Joey got really upset and hit the principal with a dustpan. It was remarked that he experienced episodes where he would strike out at others in anger when provoked. Joey McVeigh's lawyer said that the boy grew up in a tough home where things weren't easy. It seemed that Joey's mom would often yell a lot. And in his lawyer's opinion, Joey couldn't handle it anymore and just lost control. Deborah and her husband, Michael McVeigh, had separated only a few weeks before the shooting. It is said that their separation intensified Joey's angry outbursts and he started displaying more behavioral problems. So you're saying Debbie would have two sides to it. Everybody does. Joey's father shared an abusive description of Deborah. I remember when I was out there yesterday and was talking to you, yeah. and we were talking about uh, discipline with the kids. I know when I asked you about discipline, you said that you, you always heard her yelling and screaming at the kids. Did you ever see her strike the kids at all? No, I didn't saw her six years ago. She got her Josh 
the big Josh. I had to get her off of him that time. He had, Is that Josh Mike? Yeah. She had him in the corner and slapped the shit out of him. She had anger issues bad, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, this is really hard to say stuff about her that other people are going to think I'm saying again. He, she was mean. And? He wasn't the only one. They were close, but they argued and yelled and she she yelled at him too much. We were like normal mom and daughter. Okay. Like, we'd have our fights here and there, mm-hmm. but it wasn't bad as Joey. And Joey and mom argued a lot. A lot. His lawyer felt really sorry for Joey. This wasn't a physical abuse situation. Joey was beaten down every day to the point that was life as he knew it. Hyde told the court. He was told that night his mother wanted him gone. She never wanted to see him again, and that he was a worthless piece of shit. What happened today in particular, why you got so mad? I mean, like she calls me lazy. I hate when she calls me lazy, because I'm the one that brings fire on you, and I'm the one my dad was there. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of things, but no, I'm the lazy one. So you do your chores around the house and... Yeah, today a piece of wood hit me right in the floor and she's like, okay, well, just go get some wood. Is that what it started over? You were supposed to carry wood in and didn't? Yes, yeah, yeah, I can't remember. In his lawyer's view, Joey was just a kid that had to deal with many hard things. He made a wrong choice in a moment. And now, it was going to change his whole life. But... His lawyer hoped for something different. He wanted Joey to go somewhere where he could get help, like a treatment facility where he had access to therapy. How do you feel now that things are the way they are? Bad. You feel bad that it happened, that you actually shot her? Yeah. Do you think it was worth it, even though you were mad? No. Should anyone be shot or die over an argument? No. Two psychologists tested Joey to see if he was fit to stand trial and they both agreed that he was not competent. They discovered that he had been suffering from depression and anxiety, and also had a learning disability. So, the 10-year-old was sent to a treatment facility where he could learn and grow in peace. A year later, things changed. A judge looked at Joey's situation again and made a big decision. Lee wrote in his ruling, The court sees a young man who has made significant progress in many areas of life as evidenced by his increased global assessment of functioning scores from 55 to 75. McVeigh's attorney said he was surprised by the ruling that seemed to contradict the opinion of three experts who had varying degrees of interaction with McVeigh in the two years since the incident. I'm worried about how Joey will react to the evidence against him. I don't know if he will be able to sit through the evidence in a murder trial, including autopsy photos, Hyde said. This may be the first time I ask that my client not be in the courtroom for presentation of some of the evidence. Joey was transported to the Richland County Juvenile Justice Center, where he was charged with murder. Prosecutors were in favor of him remaining in a youth prison system until he was an adult, as was Joey's sister. Shauna requested the judge to impose the harshest sentence possible. According to her account, Joey didn't kill his mother to end ongoing abuse. Via a victim advocate, Shauna described Joey as a dangerous child who murdered Deborah because she stood in his way. Holmes County Assistant Prosecutor Sean Warner also asked for the most severe sanction. Deb McVeigh did not threaten him with violence, Warner said. He is not an abused child. He is an admitted juvenile delinquent. Joey ultimately pleaded guilty to charges in exchange for a plea deal. As part of the plea deal, Joey waived his right to a trial and to challenge any witness in the case. He would also be in custody until he was 21 years old. Since Joey had already confessed to killing Deborah, his attorney said it was the best option, as he didn't need to go through weeks of reliving the incident and looking at photographs and autopsies. The prosecutor was quoted saying, the issue is what to do with him. This case was never about what he did. It was about what we were going to do with him as a 10 year old. I think everyone came to the realization that it was not going to be difficult to prove that he pointed the firearm at his mother, he shot her, and she died. In 2013, Holmes County Juvenile Court Judge Thomas Lee stated that if Joey didn't get into any trouble, he could remain on probation at the treatment facility where he had been serving his time. So where is little Joey now, 10 years later? 
Joey's therapist, Jerry Hartman, is quoted saying he has made impressive progress while he was in the treatment facility. As we now examine this case in 2024, Joey is over 21, so it's safe to assume that he was released from detention. The judge had ordered that Joey remain in the treatment facility until he could contribute to society successfully, regardless of his past. He is going to be behind us in Walmart or at the gas station one day, Judge Lee said. Joey McVeigh's current whereabouts are unclear, but he's likely left the prison system and has reintegrated into society. Deborah McVeigh was buried in a private ceremony attended by her many family members and loved ones. Deb loved cooking, camping, swimming, and spending time with her family. In addition to her husband, she left behind three children, three stepchildren and two grandchildren. Rest in peace, Deborah McVeigh. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Joey McVeigh, and why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.